Hi, Jacqueline Taboni. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, congratulations on season three of the L Word Generation Q. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I'm I'm very happy to be here. It's funny, it's premiering right around the corner and we just wrapped, which is usually like not how things go. You usually have to wait months and months and months to see the uh, final product. And so I, uh, I'm so excited it's just around the corner. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the first three episodes and I'm excited for more. <laughs> Oh, I got uh, I want to know your opinion. I haven't even seen that much. Oh, I, I love it so far. I think it starts off with, I mean, not to be a double entendre, but it starts off with a bang. Um, <laughs> it's just great. Um, it. So I wanted, I want to start by asking you, uh, Finley's been on your character. Finley has been on this journey of real self-discovery, not about their sexuality in any way, but, um, uh, you know, learning to live without alcohol and what's that, what that's like in a world where alcohol is everywhere and all your friends are drinking, uh, except for a few. And I wonder if you talk a little bit about what it means to you to tell this story that I think probably a, a lot of viewers can relate to. Yeah, I think being able to, you know, explore this is really important because I think addiction is something that plagues uh, a lot of communities, but especially the queer community. Um, I think, you know, uh, we deal with a lot more, um, or you have like inherited trauma, a lot of us do, um, from, uh, you know, just coming out and things that happen. Um, but with that comes uh, self discovery. And um, I'm just honored to be able to play a character that is working through it and um, kind of exploring what it means to be on your own and trying to fit in to, uh, you know, this big wide world, find your feet. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also, uh, sorry, I actually lost my place and I never do that. Um, <laughs> you're my, my sixth interview today. So I lost No, my place. you're good. Take your time. Um, Oh, one of the things that I find really fascinating about Finley is she's so eager to please and she keeps stepping in it all the time, even with her having to make amends to those she's you know harmed in the past. She's not ready and she doesn't understand that she has to wait for the other person to be ready. She just wants them to hear her. And I wonder if you would talk about that very real phenomenon of wanting to be understood and just having to wait for someone to hold space for that. Yeah, I think Finley always wants to uh, do the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it's not the right thing for other people. Um, and so I think she's just trying to be the best version of herself. But also, it's easy to look at, you know, other people and try to fix their problems. So you don't have to look at yourself. So I think there's a lot going on with her in, um, you know, trying to be the best version, version of herself and what that means um, and just trying to find happiness. Uh, and you can't do that through other people all the time. Right, right. And would you talk a little bit about Finley coming back from rehab and coming back into a relationship that she'd had before she was sober and uh, kind of navigating the newness of being in a relationship while sober. Yeah, I think what I like love about our storyline, especially, you know, Sophie and I storyline this season is coming out of rehab. It's like, there's a very obvious storyline that could have happened. That's like, oh, you know, you like figuring out how to be sober in these circumstances. But I think really a huge problem is that Finley had the time for self-discovery um, and had the time on her own. And I think it's difficult because, you know, these two people that left the relationship at the same time going to, you know, rehab and, you know, Finley not being there for Sophie, uh, I think then you have a year or so of life and, and misunderstanding about 
what's happening and what we are and all these things. And so coming back together, there's um, an obvious gap that they sort of have to explore. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that you just wrapped the season uh, and that it's premiering soon. Um, this is the third season after the second season had a pretty long hiatus because of the pandemic. And mm -hmm. I wonder if you would chat a little bit about coming back with the cast and, you know, as queer people, chosen family is so important. And I know that, of course, this is your job, but uh, I imagine there's some element of that kind of family unit as well. So I wonder if you would lean into that. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because I feel like sometimes you have things as an actor that parallel your character. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely one of them for me um, is I think Finley this season really explores the idea of chosen family and what that means as a queer person and how that is sort of somehow the, the medicine for shame or the symptoms of shame sort of. Um, and I definitely felt that as myself on set coming back with all of these people and you're surrounded by all of these, you know, queer people of all different ages um, and different walks of life on the crew and the cast. And so to be able to have that, I'm just so incredibly thankful. You know, it feels like first season, we were like getting to know each other and everybody was really nervous. And then second season, we got so close because it was the height of the pandemic. And then third season, it we got to, everybody just like got to relax a little bit and be themselves and uh, have fun. And I think that reads through our characters when you watch the season, everybody is just having so much fun and so much more comfortable. And uh, yeah, I, I, I know that that reads on screen. So I'm excited for everybody to see it. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, it, it absolutely reads. Um, you got to do, I don't know how many scenes you get with this person, but uh, I know there's one episode where you get to do a bunch of scenes with Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> my, heart, my heart, my heart and soul. Talk about working with Rosie. Oh my gosh. Um, there's so much, like as a actor, it's incredible. She's so present and she's with you and so giving. Um, and it almost like takes your breath away. Like the first time I worked with her, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, wow. Like I really step up. Her game is just like so good. Her like moment to moment work, not to get too nerdy about acting, but yeah. uh, she's really incredible. Um, and then as a person, just the most gracious, thoughtful, uh, funny person I have ever met. And, you know, Finley's exploring this idea of having, um, you know, a, a, a mentor we're sort of an odd couple mm -hmm. um and she is there for finley in you know this big way and uh it's, it's what we we're talking about with chosen family and and rosie certainly uh delivers on that as a character and off screen is so amazing love i love to hear that um, funny as hell. As well. <laughs> she's, she's the so funniest she's person I've ever met, really. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Um, the L Word is a legacy uh, brand or, you know, medium. It it means so much to people, you know, myself included, when the original came out. And, you know, we're at this time where a lot of series about women loving women are, are being canceled after a season or they're just not getting to play out. Would you talk a little bit about what it means to you to be a part of this project that continues to make an underrepresented community feel seen? Yeah, I think I'm really grateful to Showtime that they produced this show because to me it meant so much as a kid. I mean, I was watching since I was 13 years old and, um, and I think there's no show like it. There's there's no like queer shows out there. And I just, um, all the characters are so rich and I hope 
but you know, I do this job forever to be honest with you. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful as a fan and as like a actor on the show. I, and I'll say like for the original fans, like myself, this season is one for the fans. It really delivers on a lot and it's so damn fun. Yeah, I was I was saying that earlier to Morgan that um, this feels like such a return to the new, but also a return return to the form. Um, totally. But, yeah. Um, and even the way they they like in the original series, they really broke form a lot mm -hmm. with things. You know, yeah. you have these like dream suite sequences and all of this stuff. And I think we got creative this season. Everybody, you know, and we really had a blast. There's like Good. a lot to look forward to in terms of that as well. Yeah, it comes through. Um, I just wanted to give you an opportunity if there's anything else you would like to say about the Elward Generation Q or anything else. Uh, yeah, just wanted to give you that chance. There is so much I want to say and I can't say it. <laughs> so I feel, but you know, after uh, the season, I'll gab about it to you for hours. <laughs> I, I, I'll be here. Come back. <laughs> Amazing. Love Thank it. you so much, Jacqueline. I appreciate it. Of course. Have a great day. It was so nice speaking with you. Yes, you as well.